Hey guys, welcome back to the Love and the Buy show with me, Simran. And right now we have someone who puts the pro in professional rugby playing, and uh, he is now a part of the Dubai Sharks rugby league. And um, well, welcome to the show, Mr. Dylan Hartley. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, it's it's good to be here. It's a nice story. It's a good positive story. Of course. So, are you in Dubai right now? I am, and um, I've I've come from from the UK. So like the heat, everyone's telling me how nice the weather is at the moment, but I'm I'm struggling with the heat. But before <laughs> I know what I've signed up to, I know what I've signed up to. I will acclimatize. I hope. We were told you love Dubai summer breeze. So is that true? Yeah, but I just haven't seen the breeze yet. Oh, <laughs> what are you saying? Today is such a breezy day. In fact. I've been hiding. Um, it's quite funny because I've been hiding in all the air-conditioned sort of buildings I can find. In, in the UK, for about four months, we dive from like pub to pub, fire to fire, um, kind of heating to heating. Whereas here, I'm just dodging from air conditioning to air conditioning. But no, it's very good to be here. It's um, it's really exciting for for me and my family. I suppose to we're getting to a point where this is all becoming very real for for everyone. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, that's true. But uh, so let's start off talking about rugby. And can you tell us a little bit more about your involvement with uh, the Bayes rugby community? Well, do, do you know what? I haven't had an involvement. Um, obviously, uh, a quick background: I played 16 years professionally uh, in the UK. Um, I played for for England um, for for about a decade. Uh, I played 97 times. So. I had quite a long, a long career um, and had plenty of ups and downs in it. It was a very interesting career. And I suppose the hardest thing when you retire, which I did a couple of years ago, is, is transitioning to Civvy Street and, and going and finding a real job. Because if anything, by the end of your career, you're, you're so qualified in what you do, but you leave all that knowledge and experience behind. Whereas um, the stars kind of aligned. Uh, the Dubai Sharks and myself had some conversations and... I suppose now as a director of rugby who oversees the whole rugby program, I have an opportunity to use, you know, six, well, it's probably 20 years of rugby experience and, and knowledge that I can share with the Dubai Sharks and help them or help us grow our club to, together. So for those who don't know about the Dubai Sharks rugby team, could you elaborate more on that? Well, we have aspirations. We, we're not a premier rugby club um, we do not play in the the premiership in our, our men's division um, but we have a, a robust and thriving junior section and I think long term we would love to compete on, on the biggest stage in the, in the UAE in the premiership um, but whilst we have a, a budding sort of youth program boys girls um, our, our focus is to work on that youth section and retain all those numbers and long-term have a, a thriving sort of premiership side. So um, that's the rugby on the other side of it. Uh, rugby is a lovely sport. Uh, it's, a, it's also a very unique culture. And part of that culture Thank is you. the social. It's very social. It's very social. And the Sharks, um, whilst we take our rugby seriously, um, the social side and the culture around socialising is very strong. So it's something that we hang our hat on, so to speak. So at what age do you start playing rugby or start playing sports? Um, as a, as a, I was born in New Zealand, so I didn't have a, 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 an opportunity to do anything other than rugby. It's, it's almost like religion there. Um, you know, from, from as young as I can remember, I owned a rugby ball. And, um, but, you know, from, from five years old, I can remember running around with a ball and, um, yeah, it's it's Five just years it, of age. Yeah, it's it's what I it's what I do, and, and my two children. I have a two year old and a six year old. Um, but they know what dad used to do, and they both think they're rugby players as well. <laughs> That's so cute. So uh, for you, it's always been rugby, not soccer, not football. No. Um, no, I had a good balance um, to my my sporting career. Um, I think the, the way I was probably built uh, 
suited uh, rugby and certainly professional rugby. Um, it, it's, it's a unique game because it's, it's for all shapes, sizes and abilities. You know, there's sort of a, a role for someone within the team. So it's always been that for me. Um, I might surprise you, but at 115 kilos, I, I'm, I'm quite a nimble badminton player as well. So no, I, I did everything from water polo to, to hiking to badminton to rugby at school. So it just, you know, as I got older, um, I suppose my aspirations were to play rugby um, and I found my way there. So, um, I mean, rugby is a full contact sport and I'm sure you've been injured. So did you ever have that PTSD after facing some really traumatic injury? Like, I don't want to go back on that field. It's, it's scary. Did you ever have that experience? Like a no, really bad I mean, it, I think if I, if I dropped you into that arena, you, you may be nervous or scared, but when you do something every day, you're almost conditioned to, to be in that sort of collision-based or contact-based sport. And it's, it's just like kids, you know, with, with, our, with our youth program, we don't just throw them out there and say, you know, go tackle each other and expect them. We build them up gradually. We give them the toolkit to be able to tackle properly and carry the ball properly and look after themselves. So it's one of those things from a young age, you, you become used to and you actually thrive on that element. And that's what makes rugby so unique. And that's why it ticks so many boxes for people because of the contact element. There's not many sports you can do what you do in rugby. So it's appealing to a lot of people. But um, for me, there's nothing I... And I mean, my, my mother would probably say my ears, I have what you call cauliflower ears. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's cute. That you have cauliflower ears. So have you injured your ears a lot? Yeah, they, they, they've just, you know, they've gone hard basically. And I threaten my kids with it. I say if they don't eat the, the vegetables, you'll get cauliflower ears. So there you <laughs> go. So as a director, what is your role exactly? So I, I have quite a broad sort of role. Um, there's a there's the obvious um, sort of role in coaching. Um, so helping from right down in our minis all the way up to uh, our senior teams. Um, but I think also coaching coaches, help educating the coaches. Um, I've worked under some, some good and some brilliant coaches over the years. And also keeping up to date. You know, the game's always evolving. Like every sport in the world is always evolving. People are finding out new ways to win. And rugby traditionally is coached in a very uh, traditional way. Um, I, I visit a lot of clubs, so I'd like to, I suppose, help and educate our coaching staff um, at the club to, to make sure we're coaching our kids and, and our seniors good things. Um, equally, you know, I've played a long time, so my network within the game, um, trying to, to use that and any sort of... Um, introductions or friendships that we can have you know with the sharks um just make um it's a, it's a very sort of broad role it's not one thing or this but it's um i suppose a very interesting one and i've got to spread my time and my energy so there's, there's lots for me to do so why dubai how come you felt like dubai was the right next move for you um like i've always i've always visited here on holiday and I understand I'm not coming to live on holiday because you can romanticize these things, uh, yeah. you know. Um, but I have a young family. Um, I live, I have lived in the same place for 17 years. And I want change. I want to experience something new, a different culture. I want to, I suppose, transition to the, the working world. You know, I play professional sport. I need... To, to move on from that. So I suppose the relationship with the Sharks and my, my other job with Access Hire who have made this sort of trip or this experience available to me and my family gives me an opportunity to, to keep one foot in rugby and the other foot in the, in the real world, I call it the working world. <laughs> yeah okay so that's uh, the whole idea behind it but um, could you tell me is uh, how do you feel about the rugby community in 
Dubai? Do you think it's thriving or do you think it needs a little bit more of a push and get raise more awareness around the sport? Or do you think it's got a lot of people who want to get involved and it's already something that people, are, it's a well-known sport out here? Uh, I think wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, rugby, the community within rugby is always a good community. There are always good people involved. I've been to a lot of um, environments, uh, clubs, teams, communities around the world, and 99% of them are all the same. They've got the same people, same good values, um, the same sort of volunteers, people that kind of run the club and, and keep it going. Um, so Dubai is, is no different to anywhere else in the world, and it's it's a thriving community here. It's not easy. Um, Rugby is not the... You know, everyone has its challenges. Every club has its challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's good people involved and people love the sport. And I think that to answer your question, sorry, it took a long time to do it. Every sport needs to keep pushing forward. You can't just sit still. You can't become comfortable. That You need to find ways to attract new members, find new ways to engage the kids, the youth. And you need to retain good coaches or you know, have good coaches involved. Because the, the product or the experience needs to keep people coming back and bringing more people with them. So that's why for us, looking after our youth program, if we look after our youth program, our senior program will thrive in years to come. And if we look after the social side, that unique sort of culture I talked about, um, people will keep coming back as well. And I suppose that the, the other sort of, this is happening a lot in the UK, is women's teams are popping up. So inclusivity, you know, rugby's for everyone. And um, I suppose that the next step, you know, mixed ability teams and, and all sorts. So the Sharks, we take that very seriously. Oh, that's amazing. Like encouraging women to also join the sport. Well, what am I supposed to say to my daughter when she said, dad, I want to play rugby? <laughs> Well, yeah, true. Uh, so now tell me if you have one person, if you have a student going like, if you had to convince a student to choose rugby over soccer, how would you do that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> say. No. no if, if, if one of the students were confused, okay, like they had to choose one for the after curriculum and like, okay, this is, I, I, need, I can only pursue one sport. And as someone who is an enthusiast, a rugby enthusiast, how would you convince them to choose rugby over soccer? Are there a few points that are better or more convincing? No. No? I'll say to them, go join a football team and I'll see you in six months' time. Oh, mm. okay. <laughs> that no. much confidence. No, that, that's not fair. I mean, again, I, I, I am a champion for rugby. I'm a champion for all sport. I think if kids play sport, let, I think a team sport is a special thing. And if we're going to talk about rugby, and I don't want to compare because I didn't play football professionally or soccer professionally or at any level. So being involved with a team, being involved with a rugby team is a unique experience. It's um, The sport is the sport, but everything else, the, the values that you learn with the game, the camaraderies, the friendships, the off the field stuff is what I love about the game the most. And that's what got me involved with the game to start with, was my peer group, my friends. I enjoyed going because of the people I was going with. And, you know, so be it, I kind of pursued a career in it. But when I look back at my career, it was the people, the friendships, the camaraderies that I made that I, that I hold dear. So that would be my, my thing about rugby. That's so sweet to hear. Now, uh, to wrap it all up, what does the future of uh, rugby look like in Dubai, according to you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know enough about um, it, <laughs> someone in the background saying that the future is the Dubai Sharks. But I think... <laughs> Why not? Future, it could well quite possibly be. No, because, you know, we, um, we are realistic with our ambitions. You know, we... We have ambitions for our future and we obviously need good competition to play against. So um, we sit within that and the future for the Dubai Sharks is, is having a thriving mini program or junior program and a competitive, I want to say winning, I want a winning premiership side as well. At some stage, that could be a decade, it could be five years, it could be next year. Who knows? It definitely manifest that. But where do you guys compete? Where? Yeah. Sports City is our uh, our home and our clubhouse is Arabian Ranch's golf club slash rugby club. 
Okay, so like, I, I mean, what competitions do you guys partake in? It's it's varied because our men, I mean, we've got men's team, women's teams, we play sevens tournaments, we play every sort of age group from under fours up to Colts rugby, which is under 18. So every everyone sits within their own. That's what I said. When I'm a director of rugby, it's very broad. I've got a lot of people to, to look after and a lot of volunteering uh, mums and dads giving their time. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot of management. Requires a strong leader. Well, do you know what? I know nothing about it, which is kind of interesting for me. Is I mean, I know about rugby, but in terms of being a director of rugby is a new experience for me. So it's equally as challenging. And I suppose um, that sort of uncomfortable nature of, of not knowing exactly what it looks like is going to make, I don't know, it's going to make me a better a better coach and a, a better person as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Definitely. So as more, as you give out more knowledge, the more you learn about yourself as well, sounds like that. 100%. Yeah, but thank you so much. Wishing you all the very best of luck for your uh, endeavors. And thank you so much for joining us on the Love and Dubai show. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for showing your interest in the, the Dubai Sharks. And uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you, Dylan. Bye.